does a how does a computer recognize your speech? You know, you may think this is kind of like a, an easy thing to do, but it's a very difficult thing to do. You know, if you're just uh, speaking, somehow the computer has to take these pressure uh, displacements and sort of make uh, some kind of comprehension about that. So we could uh, tell you a little bit how that, that works. And this is by far, by the way, from being a solved problem. Um, certainly in things where the environment is very noisy, uh, we are very, very far away from having a good speech recognition system. Um, if you type some kind of uh, query or you have a sentence, um, like Mike saw the man with the telescope, maybe you know we'd like to understand you know what each of these words means. You know what is the noun, what is the verb, etc. And maybe beyond that, what is the real meaning of this sentence? Can we really understand that? So how on earth can a computer do that? And are computers really good at that? As a I think that there's a long way to go still here. So for example, you can think about this in terms of search engines. Search engines don't really understand very well what you, what you really want. They just do basic, simple matching of words. But if they really could understand what your question was about, maybe you would get a much better answer. Here's another kind of problem. What about face recognition? You know, how does a computer recognize your face? You know, it's um, not maybe an obvious thing to do, but there are ways it can be done. This is something that you could learn about here. It's again not really a solved problem and there are many aspects um, which are still to be studied. What about robotics? How does a, a robot control its movements in order to do something interesting and useful? That's a complicated thing. Um, I think you'd agree that robots are not quite where we would like them to be at at the moment and there's an awful lot to be done. We're really at just at the beginning stages in robotics and control and these are some of the grand challenges of uh, computer science and engineering, how to interact with the environment in interesting ways. Also, how does a computer learn to play chess? Maybe to a very, a very good level. Uh, it can be done with some frameworks like reinforcement learning um, and we would teach you how to do this. Okay, obviously these kinds of frameworks are adaptable to other problems as well but uh, it's a very interesting question. We have, for example, in our group, we have people who've made the world's best uh, Go playing program. So um, this is the first time it's ever been done in the world to get anywhere close to that. What are the kinds of things in computer vision? You know, how do you, if you get in a video sequence, how do you understand that this is a man with a bicycle, that's a telegraph pole, and those are cars? These are obviously you know, tremendous applica applicability and um, this kind of segmentation of images is a very, very difficult problem. Even just recognizing objects within images, you know, is this a bicycle, is that a person, is extremely difficult. And we are nowhere, nowhere near from solving these problems. And these kinds of visual object recognition problems are likely to occupy researchers for probably 30 to 40 years in the future. It's very, very far from being a solved problem. It's also interesting because when you think that about a third of your brain is associated with visual processing, you can imagine what a complicated task this is. Also questions like, you know, how do you um, understand the complexities or the regulatory processes in, in biological cells? And, and how can you use those to predict, um, say, how the cell may, may respond to some other external factors? And we work a lot with the biologists and bioinformaticians to help design methods and tools which you could analyze and hopefully predict uh, useful results in biology. So for example, one thing you could do with this is personalized medicine. So uh, at the moment when you go to the doctor, you don't really get a personal treatment. You get a treatment which is kind of generic in some sense, but the hope is that in the future you'll be able to go there and they'll say, well look, you know, we've analyzed your DNA and we know that probably you should take this drug or that drug. Okay, this is because your particular genetic makeup uh, says that this is preferable. Um, this is just beginning, this kind of uh, personalized medicine, and uh, we can tell you and teach you about techniques by behind these kinds of ideas. Um, what about things like the stock market? You know, how do you predict uh, the stock market? Uh, do you predict consumer behavior and uh, demand, or for example, engine failure in a, in a product? Um, these are all things that we can, we can tell you about. Um, so in summary, there's really this potential 
um, with a tremendous uh, potential for generating wealth in being able to extract information from, from raw data. As we've heard many times, of course, you know, Google obviously attains to digitize the world and somehow create uh, uh, value from that by cracking some of the really challenging data analysis problems around. And how do they do that? Well, they hire the smartest people they can find that do machine learning. Okay, you are absolutely hot cakes if you can do these kind of things. Uh, uh, there are tremendous start salaries, particularly in the US, if you have a, an MSc or PhD in this area. Um, it's incredible at the moment. And certainly also in the UK, there's a tremendous buzz, particularly in London, in the startup scene and uh, uh, also bigger companies, but particularly in the startup scene for people with um, machine learning skills. Okay, we are inundated as a department with contacts from these people. So what is machine learning? Well, you have things like large data sets. Um, so we've heard about some of those. We have also scientific challenges, like you know, how do you understand the genome, and you have very large-scale computational resources available now, maybe data storage as well, but how do you kind of tie all these things together? How do you say, I've got a large data set, I'd like to sort of understand something about the genome from that, I've got a massive computer. Well, actually, to get all of that to work, you've got to have an algorithm which is implemented on that, and that's what machine learning is all about. Okay, so we are, as a group, we are busy mainly here, and of course we interact with other people who've got the challenges, the computational devices, and the data sets. But our main interests are in the methodology of machine learning. So the CSML group, uh, which we are at, this is the largest center in the UK in, in this area, if not the largest center in Europe. And it's certainly the most well-known center in the UK. Uh, it comprises the computer science department, the statistics, the Gatsby neuroscience department. So internationally, we are very well connected, and many of our graduates, if they wish to do so, they will go on to do PhDs in world-class programs, either in the UK, Europe, or uh, abroad, outside of Europe. Um, extremely well connected to industry. Uh, we have uh, a lot of projects, uh, offers for the MSc, which are related to uh, startup companies and bigger companies as well, including Cisco, uh, Microsoft, Intel, etc. cetera. Um, also, uh, recently, we have a, a connection with Cisco, which would potentially enable you to spend a year in the States uh, doing uh, your project with them. So we cannot guarantee that because it's a competitive process, but uh, we would expect that perhaps two of you would be able to do that per, per year. So the job market in this area is extremely strong, both in commerce and as also in academia. There are, uh, for example, our academic team here is expanding uh, all the time in, in this area. So this is the CSML, Computational Statistics Machine Learning Program. It's very, very similar to the machine learning program, except that there are some required statistics modules in this program, which are not required in the, in the machine learning program. So we have um, these two modules here, which are core, and these two modules here from the statistics department, which are also core. And there are many different options, so you can focus perhaps more on, say, machine vision, or say, bioinformatics, or information retrieval, or say, financial prediction, evolutionary algorithms, artificial intelligence, etc. Then in the, s in the summer, you will do a four month, uh, three to four month project with uh, supervision from, from us. That's it.